Good morning, I'll be showing how to connect to a Compax 3. First thing you'll need is the C3 Servo Manager software. So if you go to parker.com on the top, there's a search window, just type search um, Compax 3. You'll see any of the Compax 3s, they all have the C3 Servo Manager software. Go ahead and click on any of the Compax 3s under related documents, scroll down, and you will see a link to the solutionsparker.com slash c3 support that'll load a PDF where you can download the software or you can uh, click here for the Compax 3 Servo Manager software download and install that you will need permissions on that um, and then once you've installed that Go ahead and start the C3 Servo Manager software. Go into Options, go into RS-232-45. If your computer has a 9-pin COM port, good. Uh, you can use that. Use the uh, Compax 3 green serial cable, the SSK1-02, to connect to the Compax 3. If you're using a USB to serial adapter, use a USB 2920 from Amazon.com. It has the FTDI chipset. We know that it works. It may come up as some other COM number, um, but if you're using it, the FTDI, the driver will get installed by Windows automatically, and then you should see it under the uh, COM port. If you're having any troubles, see our video on how to troubleshoot RS-232 communications. Uh, go ahead and click OK. Now if you click connect here this will open and close the connection to the USB port. It does not actually go out and talk to the Compax 3s. A lot of people calling in will see this and say oh it's green I'm, I'm talking. No you're not actually talking to the Compax 3. You're connecting to the USB COM port. It doesn't actually mean you're talking to the device. To First, test your connection, go into device selection, go into online device identification, and then you can either double click there or you can single click to um, begin the device identification. It'll go out and check the part number on the Compax 3. It'll also retrieve the uh, amplifier board level revision information and also the any daughter cards, uh, what their versions are, and then also the firmware version. So that this shows you that you're actually, you've pulled information. If your device type doesn't match in your software, it's going to ask you, hey, I'm going to change all my menus to match what your Compax 3 actually is. Is that okay? And then you go ahead and click yes. When you first open up C3 Servo Manager software, you'll notice it's always an untitled. If you had an existing project that you didn't want to overwrite at that point in time, you can click cancel and no, and then um, just go into file, new, create a new file, and then do an upload. So once you um, verified you're, you're communicating easy enough just click the up arrow key to do a complete upload so on a base drive that'll still retrieve uh, the motor configuration in the C3 Servo Manager software but if it's a T30 it will also retrieve the Codesys program and the binary file that you need and then um, if it's a T40 it will also retrieve the cam profile as well too. So everything gets uploaded. It is a lot of information. It is across serial. The baud rate is 115-200 so it is fairly quick given the amount of data that we're pulling from the drive. It's very robust, works really well, but it does take a couple minutes for it to retrieve all this information. So um, it'll give you a status bar and it'll increment up while it's retrieving all this information. And as I said on the left hand side, it'll change these menus based on what the configuration is. So if it's an I-10, T-10, um, it would have the base configuration um, for setting up the motor, the units, 
the signal source, but you wouldn't see the IEC code assist programming, which is only an option for the T30 and the T40. So these menus will change based on the device type. Now, if you bought an I11 T30, you can actually dumb it down to an I10 T10. So in the um, device selection wizard, even though the hardware is a T30, you can dumb it down to an I10 T10. That allows you to have one spare, that, which is the highest technology level unit that you use on your machine. And then if you need a spare, you can dumb it down to an I10 T10 and uh, drop it in. So even though the side of the part number of the Compax 3 tells you it's a higher technology level, in the software you can configure it to a lower technology level. So this will tell you that you're uploading. Do you want to uh, accept this as a new configuration. Yes, I do. Um, and then the next thing, it will then prompt you to upload the IEC program. And then um, it retrieves the .pro codices program, but more importantly, also the .bin, which is the binary file. And then it asks you, where are you going to save it so um, I'm just going to save it on my desktop and then I would want to then come in here and then save this and give it a name okay so that's how you do an upload now let's uh, imagine if you had a replacement Compax 3 or you got it back from repair and then you needed to do a download. You first power on the drive. You just need 24 volts. You don't need the AC power. You don't need the motor connected to the Compax 3. So if you had a 24 volt power supply in your office and you want to do this in your office and then walk the Compax 3 out to the machine, maybe a little bit easier to do that. Let's imagine we're a customer, we go into the C3 Servo Manager software. First thing I want to do is connect to the unit. So I go into RS-232, check my COM number, click OK, make sure I'm talking to it OK. Okay, I am actually seeing the unit. Now I open up the project file. Um, if I go into open, if it was the same uh, PC, it would un be under the recent files. So I do not want to save any changes. And then, um, easy enough, just go on to the toolbar complete download configuration and this will download not only the .c3p file which includes the drive configuration information if it's a t30 or t40 it would also download the .pro project codices file and what actually gets downloaded is the compiled binary file and then also the cam profile. You do not need Codasys installed to do this, so you don't need to install Codasys, you don't need to install the targets. You do if you want to make changes to the Codasys program, but just for uploading from an old drive and downloading it into a new drive, all you need is um, to be able to upload and then get all the files and then download when you connect to the new or repaired Compax 3. So it goes through a status bar, increments up. After the configuration gets downloaded, then it'll also download the Codasys program if there needs to be. Optionally, it'll give you the uh, checkbox here to open up the optimization window if you want to you can uh, go ahead and click execute
this actually goes online with the Compax 3. You can see the status display on the top right hand corner. There is a uh, video that goes over the optimization screen, how to use this. You've got the Compax 3 error history. I've erased mine recently, so there's nothing. It's empty. And then in the setup menu, I can click enable. And if I look at the actual position, go into the setup menu, I can jog it left and right. That resumes I'm connected to my motor. Uh, my feedback is connected, my um, enable input is jumpered, or my safety circuit is not open, and um, I have AC power on the Compax 3 if you just have 24 volts on, on to download the configuration file, you're done, and you can power down, walk out to the machine, install it, connect everything, um, AC power, your motor and then your feedback connector which goes into the X13 not to be confused with the X11 which is the same gender the motor feedback goes onto the X13 connector and um, yeah so anything else let us know thanks and have a good day